everyone, and welcome to another episode of It's News to Me. I'm your host, Rachel Goodman. And I'm Magdalena McFarland. Today, we're highlighting important news happening worldwide, nationwide, and right here in our community. On Saturday, June 4th, 2016, the 31 and 6 St. Charles North Stars took on the 24 and 12 Batavia Bulldogs in the IHSA Class 4A Sectional Championship at Schaumburg High School. Despite their quick lead, the Bulldogs fell just behind after the game-winning RBI from North Star Brendan Joyce. Joyce led the North Stars to a 4-3 victory over the Bulldogs, ending one of Batavia's best baseball seasons in years, as well as head coach Matt Holmes' career after 24 years. Coach Holm took the Kane County Chronicle that assistant coach and fellow Batavia High School graduate Alex Beckman will be taking over in the role of head coach. The St. Charles North Stars moved on to super sectional game against Winnetka and came out on top winning 4-3. Their next opponent will be Mundelein High School, whom they will play the state semifinals on Friday, June 10th. The farthest team has gone in North Star history. The other two teams in the Final Four are New Lenox and Plainfield North, who will go head-to-head -head on Friday at 3 p.m. The IHSA state championship game will be held on Saturday, June 11th at 5 p.m. Both will take place at Juliet Silver Cross Field. In world news, four su suspects have been detained from a car bomb that killed 11 citizens in Instable on Tuesday, June 7th. The car bomb targeted a police bus that de detained around 8.40 8 a.m. local time during the morning rush hour. The blast killed seven police officers, four civilians, and injured 36 bystanders. As of now, no specific group has taken resp responsibility for the attack. Now let's check it out with Michelle Martzell. Hello, I'm Michelle Martzell, Promotional Services Manager here at Batavia Public Library. The library calendar is chock full of programs for all ages next week. First up, on Sunday, June 12th, from 1 to 2 p.m., teens are invited to have fun with their creative writing skills during a Teen Writers Workshop at Barnes & Noble's Booksellers in Geneva Commons. Our young adult librarian, Christine Edison, will facilitate the workshop for teen writers who have something to say and want to write about it. Registration is not required. Just show up at Barnes & Noble at 1 p.m. on Sunday. At 2 p.m., teens can then stay for a Barnes & Noble workshop for teens on story development which includes how to write a log line, create a spark page, and reimagine popular characters. Keep your creativity alive this summer during these workshops. At 7 p.m. next Tuesday, June 14th, the library presents a new Lyceum lecture called the Leland Bluebird Recording Sessions. Speaker Steve Warrenfeltz, owner of Kiss the Sky in Batavia, and Scott Tipping, a professional musician, will explain how recording sessions by a number of blues artists that took place in downtown Aurora during the 1930s influenced the entire music industry. These historic blues recordings were discovered back in the mid-1990s and are being covered by performing artists today, including Scott Tipping. Please register for this program, which is sponsored by the Batavia Public Library Foundation in collaboration with the Fox Valley Music Foundation. Families of Summer Reading Club participants are invited to attend a special performance by Sideswipe Martial Arts at 7 p.m. Wednesday, June 15th at Rotolo Middle School. This one-of-a-kind show combines traditional martial arts with acrobatics, music, and choreography. Families, please pick up your tickets, your free tickets, for this show at the Youth Services Desk. You must have a ticket to enter. Don't forget the show is at Rotolo Middle School. On Thursday, June 16th at 7 p.m., professional genealogist, author, and blogger, Thomas McEntee will discuss the most effective ways to use internet search engines to find living people when researching your family tree. The lecture is co-sponsored by the Kane County Genealogical Society and registration is required. I mentioned earlier that Scott Tipping is one of the guest speakers for the new Lyceum Lecture on June 14th. 
On Saturday, June 25th, Scott returns to the library from 1 to 3 p.m. when he will discuss his songwriting experiences and process. At 2 p.m., Scott will perform live. Registration is not required. This program is the second of a six-part singer-songwriter workshop and performance series presented by the Fox Valley Music Foundation, the Patavia Public Library, and the Aurora Public R Library West Branch this summer. The first in the series is Saturday, June 11th at the Aurora Public Library West Branch when Greg Berner talks and performs from 1 to 3 p.m. Again, registration is not required. Two workshops will be held in July and two more in August. For more information on this series, please visit fvmf.org. The next Sunday's on stage program at the library is at 2 p.m. June 26th, when Thomas Paine, Voice of the Revolution, will be presented. Actor R.J. Lindsay portrays Thomas Paine, whose writings inspired people to support independence and Washington's army to keep fighting. Please register for this program, which is sponsored by the Batavia Public Library Foundation. Read for the Win Summer Reading Club 2016 is in full swing at the library. This summer we have Game of the Week, Book Buddies, Family Movies, Chess Nights, and many more programs. Visit the online calendar for programs and the days and times they're offered. Some require registration, some do not. I'm Michelle Martzell, and I hope to see you at the library this summer. On Monday, June 6th, a registered sex offender of Villa Park was accused of videotaping an 11-year-old boy in, bath in the bathroom of Wrigley Field. Police said that 37-year-old Nicholas Greger was caught in the act by the boy's father, who contacted security, who then called the police. Greger is charged with three felony counts of illegal videotaping, all of which are sex crimes. This, however, is not Gregor's first offense. He has also allegedly videotaped children at a park near his home in Hanover Park. Along with this, he, ha he was caught videotaping in a locker room in a St. Charles pool in 2010. Currently, Gregor is being held in jail with a bond until he attends court. Hillary Clinton has made history this week. She has embraced the status as the presumptive Democratic presidential nominee this past Tuesday night. Exactly eight years earlier, Hillary dropped out of the race against Senator Barack Obama. During Hillary's concession speech, she said, although we weren't able to shatter that highest, hardest glass ceiling this time, this week, Hillary was able to say, after all our hard work and tough fights and an unwavering commitment to love, kindness, our country, and each other, we broke one of the highest, hardest glass ceilings in America, in her fundraising email sent before her victory speech. This is the first time in America in a major party's nominee will be a woman. The world has seen much growth in female leaders. 2014 marked the record high number of 22. In, Gre in Green Bay, Wisconsin, Packers quarterback Aaron Rodgers announced his new dairy-free diet. Yes, that means no more cheese for the quarterback. In a statement on Tuesday, June 7th, Rodgers says that his decision is a part of a long-term nutrition plan that he plans for himself for himself to continue his football career. Since his knee injury in January, Rogers has been following a new, a more vegan diet with occasional white and red meat. He is sticking to more fruits and mostly vegetables. This decision came after lots of research with his nutritionist and his discovery that his diet made him feel better and healthier than ever. Here's the Municipal Minute with Bill Graff. Hi, I'm Bill McGrath, the City Administrator. Today is Tuesday, June 7th, and this is this week's edition of the Municipal Minute. Uh, brush collection is in full swing. I'm sure with the rains we've had, everybody's uh, bushes have been growing tremendously, and a lot of people have taken the occasion to uh, thin a lot of it out. The next uh, brush collections in the city will be for the east side the week of June 13th, followed by the week of July 11th, and on the west side, the week of June 20th, followed by the week of July 18th. Please remember to try, have, try and have all your brush out on your parkway uh, in a big pile so that the grappler can grab it uh, by first thing Monday morning because the uh, collectors go through town very quickly. 
Uh, if they happen to miss your pile, your street, for some reason, please call Public Works. Uh, and they can uh, tell you whether they've been through your neighborhood or not and possibly a uh, double back. We've been working on several projects downtown. One is that the City Council recently awarded a grant to Len Davis, uh, who also operates Pure Imagination on uh, East Wilson Street. Uh, he uh, plans to remodel the upstairs of his building into a small banquet facility. So we're just working out some uh, access and accessibility issues. Uh, we're very excited about that. Uh, we don't have a time frame uh, for that, and as we get one, we'll certainly let you know. Uh, as we speak downtown, uh, many volunteers uh, and staff of both the city and the park district are planting about 2,500 different plants in the planting beds along Houston Street. This really is kind of the last step of the Houston, Speed, uh, Houston Street project. Uh, I think it's going to be terribly exciting to see all those plants in a, little, in a lot of color uh, and break up some of the, the uh, hardscape that we have along there. The project has been very successful, uh, allowing uh, people, especially uh, young kids on bicycles, to get up and down the Houston Street Hill uh, on a nice, safe sidewalk and have access to the McKee Street uh, pedestrian crossing. Um, the extra wide trail or section along Houston Street itself by uh, the Riverwalk Park uh, allows a lot more room for bicyclists and pedestrians to uh, stay away from each other uh, safely. Uh, another thing happening downtown is that the city recently installed a bike repair station in the plaza immediately south of City Hall it contains an air pump, uh, a rack that you can put your bike on if necessary, and several common bike tools, screwdrivers, um, uh, some other bike tools that I can't remember the name of at the moment. Uh, and you're free to use those. They're permanently attached to the uh, repair stand. We've already seen a lot of uh, use. It. So as you're coming through the downtown on your bike, feel free to come and make sure that your uh, tires are uh, uh, full of uh, air. Uh, also downtown, our city engineering consultants are doing some surveying and examination of the uh, riverbank as it goes through town. We've uh, had some erosion there that we're concerned about, and by the end of June, they are to present a couple of different concepts to halt that erosion to the uh, city council. Uh, along with that, the city council met with the park district board on May 31st to talk about the river in general, and in particular, what the uh, impact may be on the depot pond if the deterioration of the North Dam continues. Uh, and the fact is that the level of water in the depot pond is uh, linked to the uh, level of the water above the dam. And there is no question that however the dam comes down, whether uh, naturally through the uh, force of the water and on, its, uh, on the aging uh, portion of it, or whether it's uh, taken down intentionally, uh, the depot pond uh, would disappear if nothing else were done. Uh, both of the bodies discussed this at length and unanimously agreed that the uh, protection uh, and maintenance of the depot pond it is, as it is currently uh, seen is, the, is a high priority. So they have asked staff to come back uh, in the next uh, two or three weeks uh, and relate to them, uh, give them kind of a short story of what uh, the state discovered relative to the uh, river uh, in when they did the study in the 2000 to 2003 period, uh, and then uh, for those bodies to decide on a plan going forward for protection of the depot pond, and then a larger comprehensive plan uh, for the uh, river as it goes through the entire community. We think there's a lot of uh, aspects of the places they'd like to go uh, for services uh, and recreation in the downtown. Uh, Main Street Batavia was the recipient of a very nice uh, large uh, financial contribution from a resident in the community and they have uh, offered $50,000 to the city uh, to assist with the uh, wayfinding portion of the project. So they'll be very exciting and uh, we'll be coming back to the city council soon with a recommendation. Um, and lastly, uh, you know, not, not the greatest thing to talk about, but as you know or may have heard, we had a couple of uh, 
businesses that were exploiting uh, the uh, activities uh, uh, associated with uh, massages and engaged in some illicit activity. Uh, those are being pursued in court. Uh, one of the businesses is totally shut down. Uh, another uh, business that had asked uh, for uh, permission or were seeking to come into town, uh, they have uh, gone away. The space has been leased out to a new business. And uh, the third business, uh, which was one of the two that had the uh, illicit activity, uh, not only is going through court, but our information is that it's going through eviction proceedings at the moment. So um, the city council passed a bodywork ordinance, bodywork establishment ordinance just last night, uh, which will raise the level of uh, control that the city has over these uh, kinds of establishments. The state actually regulates uh, massage therapy and some other activities which the city cannot, but we think the combination of the state control and the ordinance that we passed last night will uh, make things a lot easier for us and not only to, to prevent that exploitation, but exploitation of some of the uh, people who can be actually forced to work in those places. So with that, that's all I have for this week, and I hope you enjoy the week and the good weather we have, at least for now, and we'll see you next time. On Tuesday, June 7th, it was announced that California judge's decision to give a former Stanford University swimmer a six-month jail sentence for sexually assaulting an unconscious woman has created severe outrage nationwide. 20-year-old former Stanford student and swimmer Brock Turner was accused of the assault in March 2015, after the incident occurred that year in January. Santa Sierra County Supervisor Court Judge Aaron Persky said last Thursday, June 2nd, that Turner's age and lack of criminal history made him feel that imposing a six-month jail sentence with probation was appropriate. Turner also had to register as a sex offender. Tursky also claimed that a prison sentence would have him a severe impact on him. More than 800,000 people signed a petition for Persky to lose his job. Other petitions at moveon.org and the White House's We the People site have gained about 100,000 and 25,000 signatures, respectively. Just 35 minutes away in DeKalb, Illinois, a 20-year-old man was charged with the murder of his 19-year-old girlfriend on Sunday, June 5th. Michael Culpin, a resident of DeKalb, was charged with two counts of first-degree murder, aggravated battery, domestic battery, and concealment of a homicide. Police claim Culpin beat and repeatedly stabbed Maria Disrochis in her apartment during an argument late June 3rd into early June 4th. Police found her body in a bedroom closet covered with household items. Disrochis is originally from St. Charles area where her parents still reside. Maria's mother called DeKalb police after a couple of days of being, being unable to get in touch with her daughter, as well as discovery that Maria had not showed to work. Officers then arrived at her apartment where they found Culpin with two other people. It was around 10.30 p.m. when they discovered the body. Evidence was collected near a trash bin inside of the apartment. According to the investigators, Culpin is being held at DeKalb County Jail on a $2 million bond and the other two people with Culpin at the time in the initial investigation were not charged. Now let's go to the park bench with Haley O'Brien. Hello, I'm Haley O'Brien, marketing intern for the Batavia Park District, and welcome to the park bench. I'm here today bringing you park district news at the Batavia Riverwalk. We're getting ready for awesome summer events that we would love for you and your family to attend. First off, we don't want you to miss the Batavia Fireworks Committee's second annual ice cream social on the Riverwalk this Sunday, June 12th, from 3 to 7 p.m. Here, you can make your, yourself the perfect Sunday using ice cream from the Batavia Creamery while you watch the Soapbox Derby or enjoy live music. You can also participate in the creation of a giant human flag. Speaking of flags, just a few days after the ice cream social is the 100th anniversary celebration of Flag Day. This will take place on Tuesday, June 14th from 7 to 9 p.m. at the Riverwalk. Come check out flags that will be decorated around the entire Riverwalk along with 1,777 luminaria to commemorate the year Betsy Ross made the first American flag. Your family can also enjoy live music performances. This is not an event to be missed. Next week, on Wednesday, June 15th, we will be kicking off our River Rhapsody concert series. 
This is free, family friendly, and is featured on select Wednesday nights at 7 p.m. throughout the summer at the Batavia Riverwalk. A wide variety of local and regional talent will be featured and we would love for you to come and enjoy these performances. Visit www.bataviaparks.org for the full summer concert lineup. If you haven't heard the news, the Windmill City Festival is just one month. The festival has been a staple of the community and has become a tradition for many families. Come participate in making lasting memories and enjoy countless activities over the course of three and a half days. We have a variety of activities that the whole family can enjoy. Some of these include carnival rides, a 5K at Mooseheart, ice cream eating contest, craft show and flea market, beer garden and much more. There is truly something for everyone to enjoy at the Windmill City Festival. For a full festival schedule and more information, please visit www.windmillcityfest.org. Not able to come to the Windmill City Festival? No worries. We have plenty of special events all summer long, including Batavia Quilt and Textile Show, taking place July 15th, 15th through 17th, brought to you by the Batavia Depot Museum. Developed to help fund new exhibits and programs, this beautiful show began in July 2007. The show will be held at the Batavia Park District Shannon Hall at the Eastside Community Center on 14 North Van Buren Street. The show has continued to grow and features over 150 beautiful quilts made by local quilters, an artisan market that features handmade items, quilting products, demonstrations, and more. Enjoy our commemorative themed quilts this year and anyone with a military ID gets, in for the, gets into the show for free. For more information, the full show schedule, visit www.bataviaquilts.com. Thank you again and we look forward to seeing you this summer. We'll see you next time on the park bench. In local news, on Monday, June 6, the Illinois Department of Public Health confirmed that the state's first human case of the West Nile virus for 2016. An adolescent in western Illinois became severely ill in the late May. Human cases of the virus are not typically seen until the end of July or early August. Dr. Narar Narav D. Shah of the Public Health Department says that a case this early in the year should remind us how important it is to protect ourselves from mosquito bites instead of waiting until later that summer. Common symptoms of the, vir the virus include fever, nausea, headache, and muscle aches. These may last a few couple of days or even upwards of a few weeks. In rare cases, the West Nile virus can cause meningitis or even death. The Illinois Department of Public Health encourages that the reporting of locations such as flooded yards and roadside ditches where water has been seen sitting as these locations serve as breeding ground for mosquitoes. Protect yourself and others from the virus by using insect repellent called DEET, Baradactin, Oil of Lemon, Eucalyptus, or IR3535. In a major step towards solving the issue of homeless veterans across the United States, Los Angeles, as of June 3, 2016, has approved a deal for developers to convert various underused motels into 500 permanent supportive apartments. The Housing Authority in Los Angeles plans to issue vouchers to the homeless vets funded by the U.S. Department of Veterans Affairs, which covers rent and provides services such as case management and counseling. Mayor Eric Garcetti says he believes that this is what veterans need and deserve. That's all we have for today, everyone. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of It's News to Me. Most of our programming is viewable online at mybatv.com or on YouTube under the username BATV1017. Be sure to like our page on Facebook and keep up on all of the station's current happenings. Thanks again for watching. I'm Rachel Goodman. And I'm Angelina McFarland. And, and that's, that's news to me. me.